What's up, world? It's episode two of the Javelin Breakdown Show. Let's get into it. So episode two, we're talking about the professional women's field. We're going to cover the stars from last season, as well as athletes coming off of injury or just a tough season, see where everyone's at in training. And we're going to start off with Kelsey Lee Barber. I think Kelsey deserves to be talking about first because two-time world champion. She's coming into this season just off a, a hot last couple of years. There's no reason to believe this year she won't continue to just be a dominant force in the women's javelin. Kelsey's consistently put together really strong meets when it matters most, which is not easy to do considering the format of the big meets when you have to warm up and then be sequestered and taken to the stadium and then sit and then re-warm up. You only get two throws. Just the whole procedure is challenging. So for her to be at the level she's at consistently is just really tremendous. A fun fact about Kelsey is that her husband, Mike, is her primary technical coach. That's my understanding. So if you're interested in their dynamic and learning about their training, there's some really cool videos on YouTube. Uh, under the Courtenay Javelin uh, Conference. And so there's lectures where her and Mike talk about how they do training and whatnot. And so some really interesting stuff there. But rooting for Kelsey, I think she's going to have a really strong season, just coming off a really solid last couple of years. And her Instagram shows she's uh, continuing that hard work. Next up, we're talking about Haruka Kitaguchi representing Japan. So coming off of last year, ranked number seven in the world with a really nice throw, 65. I got 65-68 written here. She competed probably more times than anybody else in that top 25 or close to. I've got written down here nearly 13 competitions over 62 meters. She takes bronze at the World Championships, placing well at the Big Diamond League meets. So a really strong season and just consistency. If she can replicate that, then again, she's going to be a force this season. Next, Alina Tenzanko representing Greece. So she was number four on the list last year with 65-81, which she produced to win the European Championships after Eugene. So at Eugene, she struggled and got 10th in qualifying, but bounced back with that European Championship title. So when you look at her world athletics progression and last year's results, you'll see some, you know, 53, 54 meter efforts followed by, you know, a 60 plus meter effort. And so her season, a little bit inconsistent, but if she can produce 60 plus meters consistently this year and maybe produce a bigger throw like the 6581 that she had at Europeans, then I think she'll be a force this season as well. Next from Belarus, Tatiana Kaladovic. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Last year, number three on the world list was 66-19 and multiple throws over 64 meters, but she did not compete at Worlds. And so not sure what's going on there. Hopefully she's able to compete at Worlds this year. It'd be interesting to see what she can do. Next is Maggie Malone. I think Maggie's leading the way for the American women. There's a couple other American women that have strong throws, but in terms of resume, Maggie's got a lot of long throws and she's just been battling some injuries. And so I'm gonna say a healthy Maggie is a dangerous Maggie. So if Maggie can be healthy this season, I think some big things could happen. Last year, she produced a 65-73 uh, in Canada, I believe, to get her uh, to US Nationals and Worlds but wasn't able to make it out of qualifying at Worlds. Um, so again, if she's healthy, she's gonna be dangerous. Next up from India, a new Rani. So India has just been all over the Javelin map, and on the men's side, we've had a number of really strong throwers over the last couple of years, led by Neeraj Chopra. But now a new, leading the way for the women, and so putting her stamp last year, 63-82, a really strong throw, and placing seventh at the World Championship. So making a final, and then getting seventh. That's really impressive. Following the World Championship, she got third at the Commonwealth Games, so a quality experience there. So I think, you know, coming off of this last season, she can take what she's learned into this next year and push that top group and see what happens. Next is Mackenzie Little. Really strong season for her last year, producing probably a lifetime best number of throws over 60 meters and setting her actual lifetime best of 64.27, which also, fun fact, is my current PR, but hopefully not for much longer. But 64.27 for her to take second at the Commonwealth Games after the World Championships. But really impressive performance at the World Championships taking fifth place, but that's not the whole story because her 63.22, 63.22 had her in first place for a little bit, then Kelsey passed her and she was in second, and then she was in second until the final round when Haruka and Kara passed her, and so she went from second to fourth. So that's really tough to miss out on a medal after being in medal position for five rounds, but a tremendous performance for her at Worlds, and then to follow that up with the Commonwealth Games result. So again, just another person to look out for, and it you know speaks to the level of throwing that's coming out of Australia. 
Next up is Christine Hussong from Germany, and we all know the quality throwing that comes out of Germany, and so she boasts a PR of 69.19. Last year she didn't compete at Worlds, but leading up to that time, these are rounded, but 63, 62, 64, 62, 61, so strong throw, so not sure what happened there, but if she's healthy and competing this season, you know, with, with a strong season until she stopped last year, and then a PR of 69 meters, she's a European champion, she's experienced, so the proud tradition of the German We'll see what she can do this year. It seems the last couple years there's always at least one, if not several, Chinese javelin throwers doing well. So last year, Shi Ying Lu was 11th on the world list with 63.86. So we'll see if her or any any other Chinese javelin throwers jump in the mix because uh, they've been able to produce some good throwing over the last couple years. A veteran on the scene, Liz Gleedle, representing Canada. She was 16th on the list last year with a 63.33. Her PR is 64.83. She's pretty experienced, so if she's able to get to Worlds and then make the final, you know, that experience could pay off, you know, something special could happen. A younger thrower, Yelen Miss Aguilar, representing Cuba, had a strong year last year but was not at the World Championships. So she's 10th on the list from last year with 64.17 and had some strong 60 plus meter meets, but also had some meets in the 55 range. So a little inconsistent, but if she can you know, put things together again, you never know. If you can throw over 60 meters at a, a major championship qualifying round, there's a chance you're gonna make the final, and then if you can produce a little more than that, then there's a good chance you're gonna be in a medal position. Another thrower you can't count out is Maria Andrzejczyk, representing Poland. Tough year last year, I think she was injured, and so she's been training in Courtenay and looks really good, so I'm excited to see what she can do. She has the longest throw in some time from, I think, two years ago. It's like 71.25, I believe. And then before that, the next longest throw was probably when Christina Oberfull uh, threw over 70 and I'm gonna test myself live here. We're gonna we're gonna see if I can figure this out Women's javelin all-time list Yeah, so we got the list here. So it was Patakova 72.28 Menendez 71.70 So Maria number three on the all-time list was 71.90 Okay, so I misspoke. This is a good this is good for trivia be thinking about this so the most recent long throw other than uh, Maria's 7140 was uh, the world record when Barbara Spatakova threw 7228. So that was 2008. Um, now Christine Hussong threw 6919 in 2021. So that was the second longest throw in very recent time. And then Kara's 6811 is 12th all time and that's 2022 as well. Well, or I should say, just 2022. So, yeah. Maria's throw is the is the only 70 meter throw in the last couple years. Um, so if she can replicate even close to that form, then she's gonna be a threat for sure. You know, other athletes that you just can't forget about, obviously the world record holder, Barbara Spatakova, through last year and has been the last couple years and still producing some good throws, just struggling at the major championships. So we'll see, you know, it's harder as you get older to be able to maintain the training volume and just the abuse that Javelin is on the body, but we'll see what she does this season. Uh, Lena Muse, um, Sarah Kolak, and Nikola Ogronikova of the Czech Republic. So, you know, those women have produced big throws as well, and just last year wasn't their year. Um, so, you know, again, you just really, you can't count. There's just a bunch of ladies that have really good potential and have historically produced some really great results. It's just a matter of if they can put it together on the day uh, and make it through the season to do that. But before we close, I want to talk about the women's dark horse pick. And so Tori Peters, really strong season last year. I'm going to read through here. Number 22 on the world list, 6240 PR to win the New Zealand champs. Several throws over 60 meters last year. Did not make world championship final. You know, tough qualifying round. So she threw 59.12 on February 3rd this year, so already opened her year. And I think if she can get over that 60 meter hump and stay in that range, she's gonna be able to make some noise this year. So excited to see what Tori can do. And interesting, she's got some javelins from Kara Winger. So a little bit of good luck there. So a little story. Uh, 
Tori was flying, some javelins broken by the airline. You know, even if you put them in a protective tube, bad things happen, sadly. But Kara, being the awesome person that she is, sent her some of her javelins. Um, so I have a clip here from her, in, uh, from Tori's Instagram story, just kind of sharing those javelins. And Kara had some notes about the kind of the history of those javelins. And so just really cool to see that. So excited to see what Tori can do this season, especially with some special javelins in her possession. So that concludes episode two of the Javelin Breakdown Show. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, you know, I'm doing this for fun and in my free time as best I can doing the research. So if I missed anyone or, you know, if any of my information was inaccurate, you know, leave a comment. You know, I want to correct that. Um, and I'm looking forward to continuing to bring you guys information and news this season. So next episode, I'll cover the men's professional field. And by that point, we'll start to see some throws from the collegians. So I'll start to just, you know, show clips of that and kind of offer up my thoughts on how people look early in the season and maybe make some projections uh, from there. But for now, good luck with your training and enjoy the journey.